Here in Manhattan, Kansas, you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN. And a capacity crowd on hand tonight in prime time for a rematch of the Big 12 Championship from a year ago. In fact, it was just 322 days these two teams stangled down in Dallas, TCU and K-State meeting once again. Well, so glad you could join us alongside of Roddy Jones. I am Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor on the sidelines with breaking news in just one minute. A lot of folks around these parts, Roddy, talking about Avery Johnson, his emergence a week ago in the big win for K-State in Lubbock. And the question is, what are we going to see tonight? Well, that is the big question. The last week in Lubbock, we thought he'd only see him for a couple of plays. Ended up playing 41 plays, and uh, he made those 41 plays count, mostly on the ground, where he scored not one, not two, not three, not four, five touchdowns tying the school record ironically one that he shares with his offensive coordinator Colin Klein but the juice he gave them was tremendous that hair flowing out of the back of the helmet but the legs on the ground we're told that he can sling it as well the question is how much will we see him and when Roy that's been the big question in Manhattan since we've been here the true freshman or the veteran Will Howard Taylor McGregor give us the answer who starts coach Klein just told me moments ago they will both take the field to start this game will howard and avery johnson will be seen for the first possession for kansas state they both share practice reps all week long and coaches believe in both of these guys so it's going to be interesting to see the way they split reps throughout the game but that will all be determined by the way that tcu plays defense against them guys buckle up so a bit of a tricky start 10 days before halloween and we look at what TCU brings to the table, Roddy, and Josh Hoover, his second career start tonight, all he did in start number one, he threw for 439 yards. Well, there was a lot of concern when Chandler Morris went down, got hurt, Josh Hoover comes in, and he looks like he is tailor-made for this Kendall Bryles offense. His ability to push the ball down the field, his command, decision-making, accuracy, you saw all of it last week against BYU. A BYU defense that basically told TCU, you're going to have to throw it to beat us. Josh Hoover did just that. Obviously the career highs, but I'm really excited to see week two in this offense or start two in this offense. How can he continue to emerge and get even better? Oh, it's Harley Day in Manhattan. We'll tell you more about that. The rematch of the Big 12 championship game. Our kickoff is coming up next. Bill Snyder Family Stadium comes to life, a packed house. The Big 12 Championship game rematch here in 2023. The Horned Frogs and the Wildcats. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor, TCU won the coin toss and deferred. And two teams, Roddy, that are starting to find their rhythm, their groove in the Big 12 standings, they still have a chance to reach the title affair. Both of them certainly do. Kansas State down the line is going to lock horns with Texas. TCU plays both Oklahoma and Texas down the line, so uh, really a lot to control. So you're telling me there's a chance, and the kickoff eight yards deep. Wildcats will get it first. And our first time to look at Avery Johnson and Will Howard, which apparently both quarterbacks will start this game on the football field for head coach Chris Kleiman. Question is, where are both of them going to line up? Avery Johnson looks like he's going to be out of wide receiver. Will Howard taking the snap. But how about this? Starting the game with both guys on the field. Trick or treat a weekend early, and why not? This is treat, not trick. I love this. DJ Giddens, the running back. Johnson in motion. Will they hand it to him? Yes! To the edge, and he'll gain a couple. Three, maybe four on first down. Brad for the tackle. And will we see more of this as we go through the night and the rest of the season? Well, they gave Avery Johnson the first carry, and now he comes off the field and lets Will Howard really get into this offense. And this is sort of what we expected. Not them both to be on the field for the first play, but Will Howard to take the first meaningful snaps. The veteran who is... Had a pretty good year so far. Helped lead K-State to the Big 12 title last year. Off a of play action, a quick toss, Phillip Brooks. He's got a first down and a little bit more across the 40. And a gain of 13 on second down, and here comes Kansas State right out of the gate. It is going to be interesting to see how TCU plays this Kansas State offense. An offense that's one of the best rushing offenses in the country, averaging over 214 yards per game. 
That time they gave up the short pass to Phillip Brooks. On first down, play action again for Howard. Wants to go deeper. This time he does, and the pass incomplete. Brooks, the intended target. Bud Clark was there, ready and waiting. And TCU defensively, Roddy, has turned the corner since that opening loss to Colorado. They really have. But on this one, there was one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with Keegan Johnson against Josh Newton. And it looked like Johnson had a step and wanted that ball thrown down the field. That was a shot that Kansas State just didn't see. An opening loss to the Buffaloes. Kansas State now on the move, and there goes Howard into TCU territory. Horn Frogs only giving up 19 points per game in Big 12 play, and the big gainer with an outstanding block by Carver Willis to help pave that path. It's easy to think that they just used the quarterback to run with Avery Johnson. That's not true. Will Howard, a very capable runner of himself, quarterback counter, a couple of blockers in front of him, and a big game. Cats are known for the ground game. That rush for 30 yards for Will Howard. Giddens this time will get the handoff. He'll weave his way across the 25. And a four-yard pickup. Kansas State impressive on its opening possession. That run, both of the last two runs were to the left side. That is the side that they want to run the ball to. Behind number 50, Cooper Beebe, the All-American. And KT Livingston, number 70, the left tackle on that side, who started 14 games a year ago. But Beebe is one of the best guards in the entire country. And Roy, I know you love your guards. This guy is one of the best. I love it when you shout out the offensive linemen. Because they need love, too. Here goes Howard. Howard! Brought down near the 10. And Kansas State on the ground. Another 12-yard pickup by the veteran quarterback. Watch number 70 on the left side. KT Livingston gets out wide, and big fish eat little fish. You want to get big bodies on little bodies? Make the little bodies tackle. Josh Newton, the corner, gets widened out. Will Howard slips underneath. And another quarterback run that goes for a big game. Cats can still pick up a first down inside the three. Howard ruled out near the 12. It'll be Brooks in motion. He'll get the give and towards the pylon. He ran out of real estate. Stepped out short of the goal line. That is enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal from the two. And out front leading one of my favorite players in the country, Ben Sinnott, who's got excellent ball skills, but his improvement as a blocker, number 34, as he comes around, has been tremendous. Also got DJ Giddens out front. Kansas State cooking on this first drive. Kansas State. One of the most efficient teams in the red zone in America. Third in the nation. Those touchdown efficiency ratings. Handoff. Easy touchdown for DJ Giddens. That'll be his fifth of the season in K-State right down the field on the opening possession tonight. Watch the cutback behind number 50, Cooper Beebe. Just absolutely mauls with, on a double team with Will Swanson. There is nobody there. Went with a little unbalanced formation. Kick KT Livingston over to the other side. The cutback was wide open. Four rushes of 10 yards or more on that drive alone. K-State finding ways to get the job done early. And our new score with 11.45 to go in the first quarter. 7-0. Cats out in front. It's about as efficient a drive as you can have, Roy, for Kansas State to open up this one in exactly the way they wanted to do it, on the ground where they make their money. And it's Will Howard, the senior, who's been through these quarterback battles and dealt with injuries in different situations under center before, whether it was Skylar Thompson, Adrian Martinez. He has found ways to persist for head coach Chris Kleiman and just be a rock for this K-State offense. Uh, he has been such a good teammate throughout his career, having backed up Skylar Thompson once upon a time, Adrian Martinez last year until Martinez went down. And then this year, 
And he's sitting next to Avery Johnson, the guy who is the talk of the state of Kansas. All he does is go out on the first drive. Talking about Will Howard drive his team down for a touchdown. Ronnie, this is my first trip to Manhattan for college football. I've been blown away by the atmosphere, the tailgating, the student section, all of the above. K-State checks those boxes. Man happening, Roy. Something to be said about that. Everhart will bring it out. Looking for a couple of blockers. He won't find them. Late flag comes in near the 20. Horn Frogs will get it at the 22 and we'll check the infraction. Terry Kirksey provided the special team stop. Lengthy conversation here with this veteran Big 12 officiating crew. All right, a lot of times you'll see a block in the back, a hold, or something happening on the return. Or let's find out. A poor starting field position for TCU. Oh, Josh Hoover will get the start. Taylor McGregor has more on the TCU Horn Frog signal call. He showed poise, accuracy, and really good decision making last week. That is what coaches thought. When I was talking to his dad, Alex, this week, he told me those are characteristics of who Josh has always been. He's never let the moment rattle him. He said in second grade, Josh was the quarterback of his flag football team. He would go to the line of scrimmage and change the play call if he felt the defense <laughs> was showing him something that they could exploit. Guys, he was seven years old. He has a poise and a knack for the quarterback position you cannot teach. Second grade audibles, Roddy Jones. I've heard it all now. No Skittles, no Skittles. Fruit roll up, fruit roll up. That's what I'm imagining the play calls were. I love it. Hoover out of the gun on first down, wants to sling it deep. Has a man, passes caught near the 20, and a 12 yard pickup. And that was Dalen Wright that hauled it in. It's good protection by that offensive line, and this CCU offense is one of the fastest in the entire country. Horn Frogs averaging almost 80 plays per game. That leads America. Imani Bailey straight ahead, and a four yard gain for TCU. Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator, after coming over from Arkansas, has instituted that tempo. He is consistently pushing the pressure, trying to keep the defense as vanilla as possible. And Josh Hoover's been running his offense essentially since high school. Similar terminology going back to his days at Rockwell Heath. That's a one-yard loss. Kendall Bryles coming in from Arkansas. He's done a good job replacing Garrett Riley, who took off for greener pastures to Clemson. He certainly has. He's one of the best offensive minds in the country, and he's got a quarterback that's tailor-made, but a big third-down situation on this one. Cats will low the box. Six showing pressure, and here they come. Hoover off the pump fake incomplete. Savion Williams, the intended receiver. K-State was all over that one, and it was Jacob Parrish with the coverage. TCU loves those in-breaking routes to Savion Williams, but Kansas State was all over it. So well coached. Defender underneath. Josh Hoover, it's not there initially, so he scrambles out. Has to let Savion Williams get to that next hole in the zone, and it ends up in an incompletion. Phillip Brooks back deep to receive this punt from Jordan Sandy. And he turns it over beautifully as Brooks retreats all the way back to the 22. Electrifying return, man. Ushered out, crossing the 25 after a punt of 54. And a return of six. Cats get it back at home, already leading TCU 7-0. Well, Roddy, you can't come to Manhattan, Kansas, and not show a little hardware. The Big 12 Championship Trophy on display prominently when you walk in the football facility and all the Cats did a year ago was beat TCU in the championship. Deuce Vaughn, of course, drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. They put up numbers across the board. They did. It was a, a tremendous year for Kansas State, and I think people forget that this was the Big 12 champion a year ago. Avery Johnson in at quarterback and fumbled the exchange. 
trying to get it to Trayshawn Ward. And Ward popped right on top of it to avoid disaster. This is sort of what you fear when you bring in a different quarterback. I actually think this was... Well, it's on both of them, honestly. Trayshawn Ward, a little slow getting that pocket up. But Will Howard, you got to know that your running back's only 5'10". That thing's got to go a little bit lower. The freshman from Wichita, Kansas. 2022 Gatorade Player of the Year here in the state. Johnson's going to keep it, and there he goes. And a lasso tackle from behind by Bradford prevented an ultra-big gain. And he's close to another first down. For the Wildcats. And right out front, it's Ben Sinnott, number 34. And Roy, Manhattan might have gone into outer space with explosion if he had taken that one to the house. Five touchdowns last week in the road win in Lubbock. Chris Kleiman just trying to keep a cap on everything. The back half of this schedule, a couple of quality quarterbacks to work with. It'll be third and short. Florida State transfer Ward in it running back. Who wants it? Johnson does. He's got a first down. Johnson weaving his way into plus territory. He is awfully slippery in the open field, Roddy. You saw the success of the quarterback run game with Will Howard on the first drive. Well, let's put in the guy that's got the juice to make explosive plays consistently. Couple of missed tackles. First, he makes Miller Bradford miss. Makes Bud Clark miss down the field. And you can tell, man, this guy is absolutely special. Will Howard rushed for a 30-yard gain on the opening drive. Avery Johnson comes in here, rushes for 23 yards there. And it's pick your poison at running back as Trayshawn Ward bottled up. Taylor, Avery Johnson pretty special, isn't he? He is so fast, and you can tell it from field level right here. Coach Kleiman said it best. He's not just the fastest guy in our team. He's the fastest guy whenever he takes the field. It was interesting talking with Colin Klein, of course, the play caller, and Chris Kleiman, the head coach this week, about Johnson right in the same neighborhood as some of Colin Klein's school records, what he was able to do last week. Second and seven. He'll take his time this time. Ward will try to get to the edge, and he does. And it's another first down for Kansas State as he plows his way across the 25, a gain of 14 more. The one word Coach Kleiman used to describe Avery Johnson, we said do it in one word if you can. And he used the word depth. His knowledge of the game, his maturity, obviously his speed in plays like this and what he's able to do with his offense. Well, it, that, that was just a good old-fashioned unbalanced line outside zone. Trayshawn Ward with an explosive run. TCU's going to have to start to devote more bodies to stopping the run. Already 111 yards on the ground for Kansas State. And movement, they'll stop this play before it starts. False start, offense, number 86, five-yard penalty, first down. First. Unforced error we've seen from Kansas State. Garrett Oakley will try it off the field. Sonny Dykes, the head coach, the Horn Frogs, talking things over this veteran officiating crew, and right now being outgained in a severe way, although it's still early. And that false start again, another danger of switching up quarterbacks. Johnson wants to throw and wants to go deep. Man to man coverage and brought in Jace Brown. Tiptoed inbounds. It'll be first and goal again for the Wildcats. That's a gain of 26. Something special about this kid. It's a great catch on the back end by Jace Brown. The freshman who the coaches told us he and Avery Johnson are basically inseparable. But this is an absolute dime of a throw. We've seen the speed. That was an incredibly placed pass down the field. Right over the top of Avery Helm. Crowd quiets on first and goal. Late pitch. Ward, and he finds the end zone. Escaped the tackle of Banks. Cross the goal line with ease. You see Treshawn Ward do this time and time again. He's not the tallest back in the world, so what do you do? You go under the tackle. 
him and trot into the end zone. It's two drives with two different quarterbacks. Same result for Kansas State, putting the ball in the end zone. This offense hitting on all cylinders. Now this one took 40 seconds longer than the previous and was two yards shorter. And the extra point is good by Chris Tennant. Six eighteen to go in a fast moving first quarter. Trayshawn Ward, he ain't and left no crumbs for the Cats. Kevin and Sam, your Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update. Houston eyeing the upset of Texas. This is fourth and inches. And Donovan Smith, the quarterback for Houston, with the pass. Unfortunately, it's broken up by Jade Barron. Texas hangs on to win it 31-24. Roy and Roddy, they'll host K-State in two weeks. That should be a fantastic game. 14-0 our score here. Back in Manhattan. And don't forget all season long student sections across the country competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Righty, we need a name for the K-State student section. I want to talk more about that in just one minute as we take a look at our drive recap presented by Rainex. Well, most of Kansas State's damage has come on the ground. And Avery Johnson, Will Howard had success on the first drive, and Avery Johnson gave him a boost on the ground, but through the air as well. This is an absolute dime down the field. And then put it in the end zone to Trayshawn Ward. A, a, a play that looked like a pitch, but Roy, it was ruled a pass? It was ruled a pass according to what we've been told here in our broadcast position. So the first career touchdown pass for Avery Johnson just occurred to Trayshawn Ward. Frogs get it back, and bumping around will be Bailey. And a gain of two on first down. Matlack with the tackle. Important possession suddenly for TCU. They have to get their defense. They have to keep their defense on the sideline for a while. Let them catch their breath. Feels like their defense has been on the field the whole game. On second down, play action. Hoover's going to be sacked inside the 20. Was sandwiched between two defenders and Desmond Purnell got there first. That'll be a loss of seven. And because of the tempo of TCU, you're now looking at a really quick possession on a third line. But it's a great play by the two linebackers getting through there. Austin Moore and Desmond Purnell meeting at the quarterback. It was a race. Cats 16 sacks on the air. Third in the Big 12. Trent Battle checks in at running back. TCU needs 15. Time for Hoover. He's one long. And what well, confusion on that route with Savion Williams. But a late penalty marker comes in. He was bumped by Will Lee. I think Will Lee grabbed a little bit of the shoulder pad and bumped Savion Williams before that ball got there. And on third and long, a costly infraction. Defense number eight, 15 yard penalty. Costly indeed. The ball was a bit overthrown. I'm not sure Savion Williams would have been able to get there. But Will Lee, who was questionable, didn't play a week ago, was questionable for this game. The costly penalty on third and long. And what a break for TCU. Joe Klanderman, defensive play caller. Not happy after that sequence. His team, though, up 14 0. Here's Bailey with a crease and a big gainer. Bailey brought down inside the 30. And here come the Horn Frogs. Kobe Savage prevented the touchdown. It's a really good job by that offensive line of opening up a massive hole. And Imani Bailey took advantage of it. It's a gain of 35 in the first big play for the Horn Frogs. They'll fake it to Bailey this time. Hoover retreats, fires a strike. That's going to be Williams and another first down. Now a little momentum for this offense. They got the break on third down, the big run right after. See if Josh Hoover can get him in the end zone. Roddy, this has to be the fastest pace we've seen this season. We'll fake it to Bailey. Front pylon and incomplete. Paris was trying to blanket Savion Williams, and TC has struggled at times in the red zone this season. They have, and... and you look at Kansas State, a team that's built to run the football, can run it in so many multiple ways, very successful. 
TCU has had its struggles as they've gotten down there, but Savion Williams, a big body, a guy that they really like. Sonny Dykes not real happy about the no call there. Four-man front for the Cats. Jared Wiley motions out. Josh Hoover across the middle and incomplete. Richardson was breaking open, and that pass came in behind him with Siegel in coverage. Now you get the big third down. I would expect Kansas State to do just what they did on that play, to drop numbers, clog up the holes for Josh Hoover, try and make him find a soft spot to throw the football. Wouldn't be surprised if TCU opts to try and pop a run. Battle the running back. And the pass came out awkwardly with heavy pressure. And that line of scrimmage crashed in quickly with Austin Moore. And Bo Palmer trying to figure things out, and they did. It was the complete opposite of what I anticipated. They brought pressure, brought six, and right up the middle, Bo Palmer was breathing down on Josh Hoover, who had to make a quick decision. Receiver's not ready, and it ends up getting them off the field. So here's Griffin Kell from 32 yards out, almost straight away. And 10 of 16 on the season. He boots it up and boots it through. Now the Horn Frogs on the road on the scoreboard. 4-12 to go in an exciting first quarter. 14-3. And a look at Aggieville here in Manhattan. It was rocking last night. Somebody got a strike. Don't forget this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you. Once again, Allstate, and it was Griffin Kell moments ago, putting TCU on the board for the first time from 32 yards out. Connecting on one of those field goals, and he will kick things away here as Treshawn Ward awaits. Just sneaks that inside the pylon through the end zone for the touchback. Coming up next week, our Saturday night football game as Coach Prime in Colorado at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, squaring off against the balanced rushing attack. The stingy defense, top 25 UCLA, 7.30 Eastern on ABC, also on the ESPN app. The country still buzzing after Stanford's comeback last Friday night against Coach Prime and the Buffaloes. It's a tough road the rest of the way for Colorado. And it's really the defenses that concern you down the stretch, including UCLA's. Will Howard back in on this series. And we were informed yesterday that it would probably be a series-by-series series conversation. Chase Brown makes his second catch. That'll be a gain of eight. And the first two possessions, one with Howard, the other with Johnson, both went according to plan for offensive play caller Colin Klein. Kind of feels like Colin Klein can do no wrong. By the way, it looks like he can still play if he had to. Certainly does. He does not get the credit that he deserves for what he does with this offense. He's one of the best offensive coordinators in the country. Keegan Johnson will move in motion. And he'll get it on the jet sweep and pick up a first down. If you're TCU defensively, Roddy, what do you try to do to disrupt this rhythm and flow with these quarterbacks and what K-State wants to do? I, I think you, you try and create some negative plays, whether that's with movement, with the defensive line, blitzing from the linebackers, maybe more run support with the safeties. You, you kind of get to the point where you, you've got to dare Kansas State to throw the ball to win it, and here they've got a lot of bodies up around the line of scrimmage. I saw Joe Gillespie, defensive coordinator. Head coach Sonny Dykes looking for answers to D.J. Giddens. No response here. Giddens to the house. From 61 yards out. And D.J. can do it on the ground and through the air. This is the other part of that coin. Shad Banks, number zero, is supposed to be in man-to-man -man coverage with the running back. He doesn't get out there. And then it's a foot race to the end zone, one that Banks is never going to win. But Joe Gillespie says, all right, we, we have to bring up more bodies. We have to stop the run. Slip the running back out of the backfield for a touchdown. Now what do you do? You're kind of six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Big time playmaking the K-State offense. Tenet's extra point is up and true once again. 21 to 3.
Well, DJ Gittins lined up in the backfield, and man-to-man -man coverage with him is Shad Banks, who's lined up just on the inside. That corner's got the tight end, so he's out of the picture. Shad Banks, zero, is supposed to have the back. And then up the sideline goes DJ Giddens. But you saw the corner on the outside. He goes in with the tight end, so there's either miscommunication there or Shad Banks just gets caught with what they call an eye violation. Eyes in the wrong place, running back slips out, down the sideline, strike up the band. And coaches talk about eye discipline all the time. Fans may not understand it. Broadcasting teams at times may not understand it. That was on display right there. He's looking at the wrong person or the wrong offensive player trying to come somewhere and appear to be lost. And it just it goes back to exactly what I just said about Colin Clark. He creates so many conflict situations for defenders through formations and through play calls that it's really hard to get a beat. Joe Gillespie said it's like they have five different offenses that they can choose their different packages and sets and play calls from. And that becomes difficult to defend, and especially when you have two quarterbacks operating at premium efficiency, it becomes an even bigger issue. And now for Josh Hoover, hey, he's played pretty well in his first two starts. A lot of responsibility on his shoulders in what appears to be a high-scoring affair in Manhattan. And look, TCU is never going to shy away from a from a high-scoring affair. This is kind of what they're built for. But when you're down this much early in the game, it really makes every possession feel so important. And you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself, but you got to go out and deliver. Josh Hoover, one-time commitment to Indiana. Changed his plans when Sonny Dykes moved from SMU to TCU. And the pass incomplete to J.P. Richardson. It'll be second down. I'll tell you what, the concerning thing for TCU has to be the pressure that Kansas State's been able to get on Josh Hoover early in this one. He's been harassed pretty often through the first couple of drives. Bailey will get another touch. He'll rumble across the 25. Brought down by Mott and a gain of four, Taylor. The pressure is interesting because remember last week in Hoover's first career start, he wasn't sacked at all. That was against a BYU defense, obviously different than Kansas State. So this is a guy learning to find his way. And last week he didn't have to deal with this type of pressure. Hoover and the Frogs need six here. Quick strike on the slant. J.P. Richardson has it, and that'll move the chains. Right in front of Siegel. And a gain of 10 on third and six. You get in those third and medium situations, and TCU goes to those slants a lot. Josh Hoover can choose whether he goes to the single receiver side of the field, goes to his favorite receiver, J.P. Richardson. Turn around and hand it to Savion Williams off the left side. And number three powers his way for a gain of five. Callister and Parrish brought him down. How about that look from TCU? They split out the running back. Savion Williams in the backfield getting a handoff. Bit of a wrinkle shown by Kendall Bryles. And a flea flicker. Hoover gets it back, wants to go long. The wheel route was there. And incomplete. Just felt like the timing was off a little bit on that one, Roy. They were trying to get to Jordan Bailey, true freshman who they really, really like, number 27. Not quite able to get there. And Joe Klanderman trying to figure out what to go with. Remember, they like those end breaking routes, those slants on third and medium. They've gone to it twice. Will they go to it a third time? Crowd has been a factor. Sanders running around and a penalty marker flies in. They're going to back him up five. Ben Taylor Whitfield. It'll be third and ten. Look. TCU is as aggressive as there is in the country on fourth down. So if you can get to fourth and three or less, they might think about going for it. They need at least seven, though. Sanders remains in at running back. Robinson running around in motion. Backside pressure, and Hoover's going to be brought down. Jacob Parrish got there. 
He'll lose a yard on the play. And K-State flexing early tonight in Manhattan. It's a great pursuit by Jacob Parrish, who comes on a blitz from the field as Hoover climbs in the pocket, just retraces, comes back to get the quarterback. It was a big stop because there was some room in front of him to run. Phillip Brooks back deep to receive Jordy Sandy's punt. And a fair catch made at the 11. Well, a punt of 51 yards. Poor starting field position for whoever Kansas State's quarterback will be on this possession. And as we mentioned earlier, it's kind of pick your poison. Will Howard has rushed for 30 yards on one single carry. Avery Johnson has rushed for 23 on a single carry tonight so far. They established it on the first drive. You mentioned the long run from Will Howard. And he was really good early on in some different quarterback run schemes. And you bring in Avery Johnson, and he gives you a little bit more burst down the field, a little bit more explosiveness. Avery Johnson back in there, but how about the success of the quarterbacks tonight? Johnson on the field. He'll pull it. He'll get to the edge. And spun out of bounds near the 15 by Shad Binks. Gain of four. And really every first down play, whether it's Johnson or Howard, it seems to generate some positive mojo for the Cats. And any time you're an offense and you can do that, uh, it, it really gets you going. But the fact that we've seen Avery Johnson not only do it with his legs, but the pass that he threw down the sideline, I'm still floored by that. It was a perfect pass. He is the future of Kansas State, but Will Howard is doing a good job of keeping him out of it for now. Ward with a crease and tripped up at the line to gain. And that was close to another enormous play. Birdie with a shoestring stop. It is enough for a first down. Cool play design. Watch the backside, Ben Sinnott. It's outside zone, but they or, excuse me, it's a little bit of a counterplay that they fake it and then they go down the field to Jace Brown, where he catches it. On that last play, though, I mean, Trayshawn Ward was just a little shoestring away from being in a foot race. Kansas State sending an early message, not only to the Horn Frogs in the Big 12 championship game rematch, to every team on the second half of the schedule in league play. Roddy Jones, it was big plays galore by both quarterbacks, the running backs, everything working to perfection in Manhattan 15 minutes in. Fifteen minutes in, and the score tells the story. Kansas State leading TCU 21-3. Back in Manhattan, Cats have it to start our second quarter. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor. How about some more play action? Avery Johnson sends one deep, and it's incomplete. Looking for Ben Sinnott. And the coverage there by Josh Newton. Game summary tells you exactly what's happened, and uh, no surprise. TCU's defense desperately needs a stop because of that last line. Kansas State perfect on its first three drives, scoring touchdowns. They've got Kansas State in a second and long. When will we see Avery Johnson's legs again? They've gone empty here. We might see it here, trying to thin out the box. Treshawn Ward at the top of the screen. And Avery Johnson probing, cuts it back. Outstanding defense, and TCU was ready. No gain of the play it was Josh Newton. We talked to yesterday, and Roddy, you asked him a question. What has changed with TCU's defense? He paused for about 10 seconds, tilted his head to the side, and said, mentality. And then uh, he went back to work quickly. That, yeah, he, he paused for 10 seconds, stared into my soul, and said, mentality, in a way that made my bones shake a little bit, Roy. I'm not going to lie. He would like to shake some bones here on third and 10. TCU in desperate need of a three and out. No rush four. Fifth defender in the box. Johnson deep again. And it's caught. Jace Brown. Another big play for number one. Mark Perry in coverage. A gain of 43. And there's a connection between number five and number one tonight. The coaches told us anytime they see Avery Johnson in the film room, Jace Brown is with them. How about the protection first? And then a beautiful throw. Another one from Avery Johnson dropping it in the bucket. And big game. He'll run across the right side, and Johnson barrels out of bounds inside the 30. 
Avery Johnson really committed to Kansas State early in the process, enrolled early, and had to deal with maybe a last-second charge with Oregon coming in in the recruiting process. And not easy to fend off the Ducks, but a bunch of schools came calling, Notre Dame as well. And he stayed true to his original commitment, wanted to stay close to home. And it has paid dividends for the Cats early. He's got a, a lot of starts in front of him in his career. He certainly does. And he is going to be an absolute legend if his career continues the way it started. After a gain of seven play action. And behind his intended receiver, Jace Brown, Taylor. He already asked his teammates, do people actually call him Sunshine, or is that just something externally? He said, yeah, I think that started on Twitter. That's what Hayden Hay Hay Gillum told me. He said it started on Twitter, but he's starting to earn the nickname. It's becoming more a part of the repertoire of nicknames within the locker room. I'm actually shocked anybody on the team knows the nickname Sunshine. Remember the Titans? Yeah, I mean, none of these guys were born when remember the Titans. That makes up. me feel really old. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's not a good way to continue this Look drive. The split with the receivers to the top. How far they are away. And widen the field. Johnson races through a crease. And that's a first down. Well, all that space to try to defend number five, nearly impossible. And he's got outstanding blocking up front, a gain of 14. And, and Taylor Portier comes around the guard. It throws a great block on Jamoy Hodge. Well, quarterback power, but Roy, you said it. They, you create the space with the split to thin out the box. You make the defensive backs dictate whether they're run support players or pass players. Clears up the picture for the freshman and another chunk on the ground. Treshawn Ward, the running back, started his career at Florida State. Nice one-two punch in the backfield. Johnson keeps it here. So difficult to bring down. He'll race out. And after a short gain, it was Bradford in the area. Well, Avery Johnson from Wichita, Kansas, the number one recruit in the state. Highest ranked player in the 2023 ESPN 300. And uh, we mentioned as well the player of the year, offensive player of the year, numerous awards. Want to stay close to home. And hey, what a four star quarterback with Coach Kleinman and what they want to do with Colin Klein and the possibilities limitless after winning the Big 12 a year ago, Roddy. And look, in an NIO world, staying home in your home state can pay massive dividends, literally. Well stated. Treshawn Ward bangs his way to the 10. And on second down, a gain of three. So an important third down coming up for TCU. Needs to at least force a, a field goal attempt in an absolute worst case scenario. Yeah. And, and what do you do here is the question. Ben Sennett requiring a little time on the sidelines. A yeah, big loss for Kansas State. He just does everything for them offensively. It's their leading receiver. So without him on this big third down, where again they go empty. Wildcats need five, and a timeout will be called by K State. Third down and five coming up when we come back. 11-22 remaining in our first half. And Kansas State on the move again. Now make sure you kick off your Week 7 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow with the Countdown Crew on ESPN. Also the app before Tua and Jalen Hurts square off in Philly. Look at how their bond was formed as teammates at Bama. That story plus all the early breaking news injury updates. Previews of each and every game right up until kickoff. Then Monday Night Football, Brock Purdy and the 49ers at 5-1 and one on the road to tangle with Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes. With Peyton and Eli once again on ESPN2. Yeah, the Chiefs, the champions, well represented here. The state of Kansas on third down. They'll try to run the jet sweep, and they will not make it. Keegan Johnson was brought down by Bradford, who's had an active first couple of quarters tonight. And that will force a field goal attempt for the Wildcats. And there's the stop that this TCU defense needed. It's a really nice job on the perimeter, setting the edge by Josh Newton, turning it back in. And Millard Bradford getting off a couple of blocks, bringing down the ball carrier. Chris Tennant on. 27-yard field goal attempt. And a rare stop. Kansas State on offense this evening. Tennant bangs it home. It's now six of eight 
leading on the year in the field goal department. Kansas State extending that lead to three touchdowns after a 79-yard drive, about five and a half minutes off the clock. Sonny Dykes searching for answers and could really use a touchdown on this possession. And you think about it just looking ahead, TCU can battle back a little bit here. They will receive the second half kickoff, Roddy. Yeah, and look, the offense has only been on the field three times. A couple of quick possessions and then that field goal. But you said it. They're going to have to put the ball in the end zone. And you would hope that the defense is figuring it out a little bit. After getting that stop, you've got a little bit of confidence. Can you continue that to the offensive side of the football and get something going with Josh Hoover in that offense? Well, Josh Hoover threw 33 passes last week in the first half against BYU. Said in his post-game press conference, all credit to the offensive line. I was untouched really the entire game. It has been a, a little bit of a different story tonight. Facing adversity, replacing the injured Chandler Morris. And on the road in hostile territory, Frogs and Josh Hoover set to be tested. From the five, Everhart corrals it and races out of bounds. We'll check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Hi, Roy. Time for the Chick-fil-A move on the field. Riley Leonard is playing Sam Acho, and so too is Jacquez Moore. You're going to see a touchdown here, but a bad angle by the cornerback. Corner goes, number 23 goes too far inside and gets outrun by Moore. Florida State has the ball trying to move back into Duke territory, but right now it's 7-0 Blue Devils. Casey, I see what you did there. Nobody puts Riley Leonard in a corner. Let's be honest with ourselves. Incredible he's playing tonight in Tallahassee. I am shocked. The way he was walking a week ago, for him to go out and play tackle football tonight, credit to him and his toughness, credit to that sports medicine staff at Duke. Wiley in motion on first down. Pressure. Hoover escapes. He'll buy some time. And for a moment, I thought Wiley was out of bounds, then raced back in. But he corrals it for a gain of seven. The pressure coming for Mott. And it's just one-on-one -on -one with the tackle with Mott. The pressure, though, for Josh Hoover is, is kind of what's helped result in the drive results. Bailey gets to the edge. Darts ahead to the 35. Gain of seven more. Austin Moore with a tackle. TCU with tempo and a first down. Hoover pulls it out. And the crosser brought in by Dalen Wright for a gain of eight. I just love the decisiveness that Josh Hoover plays with. It looks like every single play, he knows exactly where he wants to go. Roddy, it felt like when you watched him on film, his accuracy really stood out to you, making his first start. That'll be a first down for Bailey in a three-yard game. And a lot of that comes from that confidence. His head coach, Mike Spradlin, actually coached with Art Bryles, Kendall Bryles' father at Houston, so a lot of the same verbiage is used in his high school offense and this offense here. Huge advantage coming in. Trying to understand what Kendall Bryles wants to do. Bailey stopped at the line, T-Mac. Hoover's confidence also comes from the fact that his dad, Alex, played college football and then spent time on NFL rosters. Football was all they talked about growing up. He told me the fact that his dad played linebacker created an advantage from him early because his dad could explain defenses and what they were thinking attacking a quarterback. There's got to be some inherent toughness that's passed down the line there for a linebacker who raises a quarterback. Yeah, I would say so. Second and ten. Can't let your son turn into... To be, a, be one of those quarterbacks that never wants to be touched if you're a linebacker. Officially second and nine. And Hoover heaves one deep looking for Williams. Man-to-man -man coverage. An outstanding coverage by Garber. And it was Keenan Garber about 45 yards down the field. It's a great job of playing the hands of the receiver by Keenan Garber. Savion Williams, again, six foot five. But Garber goes up through the hands. And Garber's a former wide receiver that moved to corner a year ago. Great play there. Frogs one of four on third down. They need nine here. And on the brink in this second quarter. Hoover, harass across the middle and incomplete. Richardson, the intended receiver. And Siegel broke it up. 
protections. This offensive line has had a really tough time dealing with the defensive pressure from Kansas State. It comes right up the middle. Great individual effort. And it's actually pretty good by Josh Hoover to get the pass off. Yeah, Leo able to punch through. And a fair catch made right in front of the 10 yard line by Phillip Brooks, a punt of 42. K State gets it back, leading 24 to 3 after this. Will Howard, the senior, Avery Johnson, the freshman, basically splitting series. First one, then the other, and the production has been virtually identical, although they've done it, I guess, Roddy, in a little bit of different ways so far. Yeah, I mean, Avery Johnson's been a little more flashy, but Will Howard's been just as efficient. I give the credit for that, honestly, to the everybody else around them. The offensive line has been tremendous. The receivers have helped them out. Running backs have gotten involved. It's been a great plan and execution for Kansas State offensively. Cats have touched it four times. They've gone 70 yards or further on all four drives, and they've scored on all four possessions. Three touchdowns and a field goal. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor on the sidelines. T-Mac, the energy downstairs with K-State, what's it like? Well, everything is working for them. And the leader on this offensive line, Hayden Gillum, the message is very clear. Let's keep up the intensity. Let's keep going. They want to build upon this success, guys. This offensive linemen love it when you start to run the football, assert your dominance against the defense. Big 12 champions, a couple of early losses. Into the flats, Giddens going to have another first down. But it's funny, as K-State lost on a walk-off field goal of 61 yards at Missouri, Roddy kind of laid an egg against Oklahoma State in kind of a strange setback. When you go back to last week and what happened against Texas Tech on the road, that was 15 more yards. And it feels like things are suddenly start to click for a team in the second half of the season that may end up controlling its own destiny. It's a, it's a team that does control its own destiny. Chris Kleiman's team's gotten a lot better. Screen pass comes in low to Brooks. And it'll be second down. So Will Howard back in at quarterback. And you, you kind of see the, the dilemma that TCU has on defense. A couple of plays ago, DJ Giddens gets out of the backfield again. They're in man-to-man -man coverage where the linebackers haven't been able to cover Kansas State's backs man-to-man. -man. If you go to more of a zone look, keep those safeties back, well, Kansas State's been able to run the ball consistently. It's been tough. Giddens the back, Giddens the carry. He'll plow his way to 39. It'll be third and two after a gain of eight. Tell you what, KT live. Leviston, the left tackle, he's having himself a game. Joe Gillespie's got a third and short now where he's got to figure out what to do. But DJ Giddens has gotten going a little bit on the ground. A couple tight ends in the game for Kansas State. Cats have been averaging over 12 yards per play before this drive. Need two more yards here to keep it alive. Three man front, eight in the box, and weaving ahead. For the first down, will be Giddens again. Needed two, game three. Dominic Williams, the tackle, but not before the drive, is extended. Kansas State's offensive line creating just enough room. Giddens to get the first down. Colin Klein putting on a clinic to start tonight. I like the alliteration. Low snap, Howard. We'll try to buy some time, direct traffic. And a long throw is incomplete. And that collision happening legally. R.G. Garcia hit hard by Bud Clark. The fans don't like it, but there's no way in the world for Bud Clark to know that, that the receiver has no chance of making that, that play. A little bit of a push on the quarterback, but Again, all within the rules. And that was Brooks. A two-hand touch that sent Howard to the turf.
Quiet for a moment as Jackson goes in motion. He'll get the handoff on the jet sweep. Racing around the edge for a first down. And lays the lumber out of bounds. Numeral zero flexing. Jaden Jackson shows the speed. Treshawn Ward gets just enough on Bud Clark down the field to throw him off. Miller Bradford tries to make the tackle as well. And then, hey, if you're going to tackle, you better bring your big boy pants because we are laying the lumber here in Manhattan. Jackson with authority. K-State in plus territory. Averaging over seven and a half yards per rush so far tonight. It looks like you're going to get man-to-man -man coverage on the back end with a little bit of pressure. For a gain of 14, Howard on the move and out of bounds. Brooks was in the area and that sailed over his head at the 30. It was a really nice job by TCU on defense. They showed man-to-man -man across the board. Looked like it could be a zero blitz. That means no safeties in the middle of the field. Everybody's one-on-one -on -one and you're bringing pressure. Kansas State checks to a, a rollout to get away from that pressure. Then TCU drops eight. There's nowhere to go with the football. And they get an incomplete pass on first down. 5'11 remaining in the first half. Treshawn Ward, A gap. And barrels across the 40. So on second and 10, Brooks keeps that gain to just six yards. Third down. And you could just feel from our broadcast position, Joe Gillespie looking at the play sheet. What can we call? What can we do? What button can we press to try to disrupt the rhythm for Kansas State on offense? And, and you can feel the clock just ticking away as they completely bleed away the second quarter. Brooks will shift. Howard under duress and fires the pass incomplete. A little bit of pressure. Joe Gillespie has to like how his team has performed better on this possession than at any other point tonight. He better get his team ready to defend a fourth down. In that no man's land where you don't gain a ton by a punt. Kansas State up three scores. I mean, I'm saying you go for it here. Maybe you incorporate some of that quarterback run again. They've been so dominant with that. Right, it almost feels like you'd love to have Avery Johnson on the field here, but Will Howard can scramble as well. Let's see. Jackson will shift on fourth down. All night to throw for Howard. Went through the progression. Fires it incomplete. And there's the stop the Horn Frogs have been searching for this entire first half. Well, he had all kinds of time. It was great protection on the break, on the back end. But as you said, TCU gets off the field on a fourth down. Obi Izor applying the pressure. Joe Gillespie can breathe for a moment. Coming up Tuesday night, all 32 teams take the ice, and we'll have a triple header on ESPN, starting with the Caps hosting the Maple Leafs at 6, six Eastern, and then the Bruins finish up their four-game road trip against Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks, and the night, yes, don't forget about it, capped off by the Flyers taking on the defending Stanley Cup champs. Coverage begins with the point at 5 Eastern. On the field in Manhattan, TCU with its best starting field position of the night. Bailey gains two. Stufflebean stopped him right there. And Josh Hoover, sensational a week ago in the first two quarters. Hasn't been bad tonight, but he's had a lot of adversity to deal with in front of him. A lot more pressure and a lot less of the football in the first half this week. Fake it to Bailey into the flats. And a nifty play call results in TCU on the move. Everhart gains 13, and Major Everhart. All kinds of speed to burn. And all kinds of space. Good play call by Kendall Bryles to get the speedy receiver out in the flat. Tempo again. Hoover surveying. And we'll try to send one deep back shoulder. Incomplete. Jalen Robinson wanted the penalty marker. He did not get it. It was Parrish in coverage. I could see why he wanted the penalty, but there was hand fighting on both sides. And Jalen Robinson actually has a little push there on the end on Jacob Parrish. So good no call. I like 
the official keeping the laundry in his pocket. I mean, everybody's got a right to the football a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. You push me, you know, a little hand fighting here and there. I like the no call there as well. Hoover. No flats to Curtis. No gain on the play. Austin Moore with a tackle. You know, Kansas State has had some depth issues at linebacker, dealing with injuries at safety a little bit. Certainly have. Look, if, if you're TCU, I think this is four down territory. Our analytics suggest a go for it if you can get to four or less on this play. Okay, say secondary will be tested here. Hoover retreats, fires a pass incomplete. And it was Curtis again. Heavy pressure by Khalid Duke. How many times have you said heavy pressure on Josh Hoover? It, it's been blitzing some. Some of it's just been confusion on the offensive line, and some of it's just been getting beat. But no matter how it's happened, it's almost completely opposite from a week ago where Josh Hoover wasn't touched. If this was real grass, this uniform would be extremely dirty. It doesn't really get dirty on the turf. No, it doesn't. Fourth punt for Sandy. And into the end zone for the touchback. A oh, punt of 47. K-State gets it back at its own 20. The 21 point lead after this. Coming up on the DirecTV halftime report, we'll show you how both Oklahoma and Texas had much tougher than expected Saturdays, plus how Ohio State was able to shut down Penn State, and we'll check in on that Duke Florida State matchup. Coming up, Roy, when you join us for the DirecTV halftime report. Kevin Connors, we cannot wait. One of the hardest working men, along with Sam Macho, on these college football Saturdays. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor. It has been all Kansas State. Avery Johnson back on the field. He will be quickly corralled and brought down for a loss of a couple. And it was a TFL for three, if you will. So, Sonny Dykes electing not to go for it on fourth down. He'll try to pin Kansas State back deep in its own territory. And he'll look for his defense to come up with some plays. And a good start. Tackle for loss in the backfield. Kansas State milking that clock, knowing that TCU gets the ball first in the second half. Tico Brown, the first TFL of the night for TCU. And Giddens will be able to weave his way through traffic to make it third and short. It'll be third down and three. And after a gain of 10. Physicality of Kansas State up front has been evident so far in this game. And on these replays, it's felt like Avery Johnson's kept a lot more than he's given. I'd be a little surprised if this one's put in the air. Actually, I'd be a lot surprised. You and I were debating what play was coming on fourth down moments ago. And even down in the red zone earlier. I wouldn't mind seeing him running around a little bit more if I'm a K-State fan. Yeah, and even if you don't get it, then you got you force TCU to burn a timeout. Giddens, Flank Johnson, quarterback run. Johnson upended and pinned down quickly at the line to gain, and let's see where they spot it. The initial indication that that is enough for a first down. Well, it was Bradford with the hard hit, and Johnson appears to be okay. It's a, it's a great play by Millard Bradford. Just a little too late. Johnson back to the air. Floats one long. Looking for Jace Brown. And it is incomplete. Hellman coverage. That was a big call on that on that third down on the spot because when he got hit, when he came down, he the was ball short. was well short. But obviously, it's, it's where your forward progress is stopped. So where he was when he actually got hit, but I mean, he was knocked back far enough where you know, it was definitely a question on whether or not he got the line to gain, but the officials and the replay officials definitely thought he did. Cats have two timeouts remaining. TCU with all three under a minute to go in the half. Avery Johnson takes off again. Avery Johnson with another first down. Kept his balance across the 40, and a late flag comes in. Caleb Fox stopped him for a gain of 12. They're going to tack on a couple of more yards after that. Wildcats already over 200 yards rushing tonight in the first half, Roddy. 
after the play, pistol foul, late hit, number 90 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, will be added to the end of the run on that first down. And the transfer from Stephen F. Austin, Caleb Fox. I, I don't, I don't love that call. I, I, I think that. Avery Johnson's going down when Caleb Fox starts that. And look, we see it all the time with non-quarterbacks. I think that's a little bit of a quarterback going down call. Three-man front. Johnson all night. Late pressure and incomplete. Brooks in the area. Second and ten. Yeah, and, and look, I, we, we see it all the time with non-quarterbacks. When they're going down, you're kind of given the benefit of the doubt. If you start your – if you start the pursuit – I mean, Johnson's up. He starts to go down to kind of finish him off and then falls on him right after. I understand. I just don't think it's – if it's a running back that does that, I don't think that it's a flag. I think that they probably keep it in their pocket, which makes me not feel like you should protect a running quarterback like that. But I can understand it. 47th play of the half for Kansas State. There goes Giddens, another big play on the ground. He'll dance out near the 20. And the Cats have been relentless in our first two quarters tonight. The run game has been truly relentless. I mean, it's, it's almost a clinic on how to run some of these plays. And everybody they've given the ball pretty much has had success. Gain of 23 more. Kansas State over 400 total yards already. Johnson wants to add to that tally. And he'll get out inside the 20. Smart of Avery Johnson to get out of bounds. But this is the previous play, the handoff to DJ Giddens. And look who's out there in front, Hayden Gillum. The center and good blocking down the field. This is a really, really good, experienced offensive line. And Joe Gillespie has kind of had his hands full with it. But Cooper Beebe, the, the left guard, Hayden Gillum there, the center. Just so much experience. And they've gotten better over the course of the year. At 25 seconds and two timeouts to work with. And Johnson, all kinds of time. That offensive line dominant, Roddy, as you said, in the pass incomplete. As Jace Brown was coming towards him, and Johnson went away from him. And now you've got a third and eight. You've got points. You're telling your young freshman quarterback, hey, look, we've got a field goal attempt in the bag. It's fine for you to eat this ball, to try and take off and run if you don't like the first, the first read. Biggest thing is don't put the ball in harm's way. Third down and eight. You can hear a pin drop in this stadium with a freshman quarterback on the field. Shifted Brown in motion. Johnson finally gets rid of it. And that's Jackson. Upended near the line to gain. There is a flag on the field near the 17. And a lot to unpack as Brooks made the stop finally. Seven seconds to go. It's a good job by Avery Johnson. Illegal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Third down, five-yard penalty. Only seven seconds remain, and they're going to back him up five, so a field goal attempt potentially comes a little bit longer. Or do you try another play maybe towards the no, end zone? No, I, I, think, I think you go ahead and you kick it, even though it's on third down. You're in that weird seven seconds. You could literally throw a fade to the end zone. But you don't have time to have a freshman quarterback drop back, make a read, and know you're going to have the field goal attempt. So I don't ha hate Kansas State. 40-yard field goal attempt coming from Chris Tennant. And Chris Kleiman onto the field, and the timeout will be called here. Well, regardless of whether or not this field goal attempt is good. We've used the word clinic a couple of times tonight in talking about Colin Klein and talking about Chris Kleiman and the precision of K-State's offensive attack trying to do damage against Joe Gillespie's bunch. Yeah, the, it, it's, it's been tremendous. I think there was some confusion with the clock on that last one, Roy, because the, the, the play before, the, the clock was stopped for that third down play, correct? Before the third down play, or was the clock running before that third down play? The clock play? was not running. Yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of what I thought, too. 
then you had the pass down the field. So I think there was some confusion on whether or not the clock was going to start, which is why we got the late timeout. Back to what you said about, about the clinic. The run game has been so good for Kansas State in this first half that TCU is really going to be searching for answers here at halftime. Tennant, the junior, 6 of 8 this season. And the 32-yarder was true earlier tonight from inside the right hash. And he bangs that one through. On the final play of our first half in Kansas State, the 27-3 halftime advantage in Manhattan. Both quarterbacks doing damage, and Sonny Dykes seeking answers. Halftime report coming up right now. Let's get you to the studio. Kevin Connor, Sam Macho. Gentlemen, take it away. Back inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium, you're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. And two teams starting to find their way at the halfway point of the conference season. It is advantage to the home squad. Kansas State leading TCU two quarters in by a score of 27 to 3. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor. Stats really tell the story. 406 yards to a buck 22. Is that a good thing if you're a fan of the Wildcats? It's a very good thing if you're a fan of the Wildcats. Check out the rushing advantage, 238 to 56. Time of possession absolutely dominated. Kansas State had about the best first half that they've had all season in this one. The question for TCU who gets the ball first in the second half, what answers did you find at halftime? Can Josh Hoover start to warm up as we saw a week ago in Fort Worth for head coach Sonny Dykes? against BYU and can the defense find a way to get a couple of more stops with the offense a chance to come back. Rematch of the Big 12 title affair from last year. Third time these teams have met about the last 365 days. And a fair catch on the kickoff. TCU will have it at its own 25, and we'll check in with T-Mac. None of it has been good so far. That is what Sonny Dykes made very clear to me at halftime. He was upset, and he said defensively up front, we're playing soft, and we need to pick up the aggression. And then he said offensively so far, Josh, he hasn't gotten the ball out fast enough, and we have to do a better job of protecting him. And then on the other side, Chris Kleiman, he said, look, we were up on these guys 28 to 17 last year at their place. We lost that game, so we understand the importance of keeping it going. And he said offensively, we would like to spread things out and get our true running backs in Baltimore. No, Josh Hoover, 7 of 17 in the first half, just 66 yards. And he was sacked twice and harassed. It felt like every snap. Great catch by Savion Williams diving across the middle of the field for a gain of 16. Good quick decision to go back to Savion Williams by Josh Hoover, who wanted a double move up the sideline. Williams lined up in the backfield at one point at running back in the first half. Monty Bailey has been held in check thus far on the ground. He's only carried it nine times. Louisiana transfer, carry it for a tenth occasion. And bottled up near the 48. That'll be a seven-yard gain, and TCU on the move. Two positive plays, exactly what TCU wanted coming out of halftime. Frogs put up 44 points last week in Fort Worth against BYU. Williams again upended crossing the 40. Comeback route was there. Chopped down by Kobe Savage. Again, a 15 more. You can tell the talk to Josh Hoover at half was get the ball out of your hands quick. Already a couple of quick strikes and on target. Slant pattern nearly intercepted off the carom. Looking for Dalen Wright. Could not hold on to it, and it was Desmond Purnell that dropped the pick. It's just it's a short slant underneath the clear out throw a little high and Desmond Purnell if he catches that he's in a foot race with Josh Hoover to the end zone. Opening possession of our second half. Hoover sensing pressure the dump off pass and Chase Curtis plows his way ahead for a gain of seven more. They're pretty much operating as if it is four down territory. Anytime you get around midfield, well into four down territory now, but uh... Well, total chaos with Richardson coming across the backfield. 
Full start. Offense number 51. Five yard penalty. Third down. Colton Deary, Maryland transfer. I actually think it was probably a little unfair for Deary to be called out like that. He wasn't alone. It wasn't just him. But again, you're down 24 points in this game. You're going for it on fourth down, almost regardless at this point, at this part of the field. So how can you at least get positive yardage out of this play to make it more manageable if you do not get the first down? Empty backfield with Richardson in motion. More pressure, Hoover off the back foot. Curtis, get back across the 30 and stop just short. It'll be fourth and one with Stufflebean making sure the first down was not achieved and the pressure, rather, coming from Stufflebean that time. It's a nice job with the open field tackle. Now you're at fourth and one. Imani Bailey coming out of the game. Well, TCU going under center. Trey Sanders checks in. And the inside give, that goes to Sanders. We haven't seen that formation or a play like that tonight from Kendall Bryles or Sonny Dykes. It is enough for the first down. It's like an old school dive play coming from it. The far formation. Trey Sanders operating as a fullback. Jalen Robinson was the tailback. TCU able to get the first down. Sonny Dykes told us Trent Battle was getting more reps this week. We've seen him on third down. A handful of occasions so far. Empty backfield. K-State shows pressure. Sidearm delivery is there. And it'll be Sanders again. Kansas State was trying to communicate late on that one. Jake Clifton was doing jumping jacks, trying to get the attention of somebody. And they got the right call. It didn't cost them, seemingly. And on second down, they'll feed the hot hand for the moment. Sanders turned around quickly by Jake Clifton. Now Clifton stepping into that Mike linebacker spot tonight with Austin Romaine banged up. It's a good job on the edge, setting the edge by Kansas State, and then Clifton comes and cleans, cleans up the pile. Clifton, a really good sideline to sideline linebacker. Interesting formation with TCU. Four receivers to the bottom of the screen. Third and five. Sanders on the screen, twisting and turning his way across the 20. He will be stopped short. It'll be fourth down again. B.J. Payne got there. And Trey Sanders is a big back, fighting for the first down. Not quite able to get there. Fourth and short. Opening possession of the second half on the slant. Boy, that play looked difficult to complete from the onset. Jacob Parrish swatted it away from Savion Williams. That is, I mean, it, it's, when the, when the corner's playing that close, it's going to be contested no matter what. They love those slants in third and fourth and short. It's great coverage by Jacob Parrish, and the Kansas State defense gets off the field on a big fourth down. start our third quarter first possession for Kansas State after TCU was stopped on fourth down moments ago Roddy Jones Roy Philpott and Taylor McGregor Jace Brown in motion on the jet sweep and that fourth down play call was interesting by Kendall Browse and Sonny Dykes there yeah it certainly was they like those slants but on the outside Jacob Parrish is pressed up in man-to-man -man coverage. It looks like Josh Hoover decided that's where he was going no matter what. Savion Williams has a big body. The throw's a little low. It seemed like everything a little disjointed on that fourth down. Treshawn Ward, Anthony Frias. A couple of running backs in the backfield will join Howard this time for the first time tonight. And the inside give goes to Ward. T-Mac coming out of halftime said that Sonny Dykes didn't like the way his defensive line was playing. Thought his defensive line was playing a little soft with the way that Kansas State ran the football. 
That looked a little bit more physical up front from his defensive line to set up a third and five. It was Oyewale that made the tackle. And TCU in search of a big play just to provide some kind of spark. Could it come from its defense? Howard wants to throw it. Ward raced out of the backfield, and the crossing pattern caught. And that'll be Garrett Oakley. I've got him having his first catch of the season right there. Mark Perry, the tackle. How about that by the tight end? A combination where you've got a slant return and a dig behind it. And Oakley, if you're going to have your first catch of the year, why not make it a contested one? I mean, he got bumped in the process and held on to it. So big shoes to fill. We have not seen Ben Sinnott back in the game since he left in the first quarter. And Sinnott, you mentioned the numbers he's put up on offense this season. Delayed give goes to Ward. And he'll bob his way across the 40. Keep churning the legs across the 45. And that's enough for a first down. Well, next week, our Saturday night football game as Coach Prime in Colorado, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena to square off against the bounce rushing attack in the Stingy D of number 25 UCLA. 7.30 Eastern on ABC, also on the ESPN app. It's one of those games, Buffaloes, if you're looking ahead towards the postseason, it would be wise to get on the road given the comeback by Stanford last Friday night, but we will see. Sounds like... Uh... When we were talking Coach Prime and Chip Kelly, there's a review on the field. But you are right. You look at the buff schedule the rest of the way. Uh, that, that game against Stanford may come back to haunt them. It's a tough road the rest of the season for the Buffs. Well, the ball popped out of there. And it was Bud Clark came away with it. At the very end, and the forward progress just kept churning and moving straight ahead. And the replay booth having a look at this right now. I don't know that he's ever hit the ground. I think that's the key there. It was a player underneath him that allowed him to stay upright for just that extra second and hard to tell when the ball popped out or what happened in that sequence. Yeah, I, I, I think the replay booth wanted to take a longer look at this and they were going to be given the opportunity with the snap. They're trying to make sure it's not a fumble. The, the question is though, when does that ball come loose? What body part is whose? You know, what, who does that elbow belong to? Who does the, the knee belong to? It's, it's going to be hard to parse through that. It feels to me very much like a you go with the call on the field here. And there was no fumble awarded to TCU and to Bud Clark after that. Always looking for indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Great crowd on hand here tonight. It's Harley Day in Manhattan. And yes, it is. It's a tradition that spans more than a quarter of a century. First down. And the ruling on the field stands, so nothing there to overturn that call. I didn't know you could read lips. Is it Apple Day, too? Well, where are these apples coming from? A little apple. Is that what they call it? The apples don't grow on the bleachers. Somebody, <laughs> is this contraband? Are these contraband apples that they've snuck in? We could go to the concession stand and buy some fruit. I've never seen a, an apple at a concession stand at a stadium. We could have like a candied apple, maybe. <laughs> Ward to the perimeter. Another first down. Avery Helm forced to balance a gain of 12 more. And now Kansas State in the rush yards now at 266 tonight. And it's been a little bit of everybody. And Avery Johnson, this one, Treshawn Ward. DJ Giddens has gotten in on it for 57 yards. Ward has been slippery this season coming in from Tallahassee. And speak of the devil ahead to the 35. Gain of seven more. So Ward can do it on the ground, obviously, through the air. It's an interesting one-two combination in the backfield with DJ Giddens and Treshawn Ward. And they've got some other weapons back there. That is a little apple. I tried. I'll I do like the sweet apple, you know? 
Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite apple? The Granny Smith apple? Oh, uh, the green one. Okay. Oh, that's a little tart No, for the me. Granny Smith apple. Like, it's the one that comes from out west somewhere. I think that's what okay. they call it. Okay. I think Granny Smiths are green, aren't they? All right. Oh, I don't know. Are they? I'm a Honeycrisp guy. Yeah, they're green. Or an en Envy oh, apple guy, personally. Frias picks up a first down, more importantly. Anthony Frias getting on. And, and you know, if, if you're Kansas State, you put together drives like this, it's a little early uh, for it to be getting late for TCU. Right. But it's getting late early if they're able to punch this one in the end zone. you got to start counting possessions at this point almost because you need at least three, and you can't get the ball back. TCU with losses against Iowa State on the road, West Virginia in Fort Worth. And in Colorado to start this season, if you talk to this coaching staff, they feel like you know, the talent level hasn't dropped off from last year's team that made the national championship game. But they won all the one-score games last year. A little bit of a different story so far with two setbacks, those same kinds of games so far this season. And a timeout on the field as we step aside. The playoff race is so wide open. Who's going to survive the gauntlet? Football playoff top 25, October 31st on ESPN. Oh, it's coming on Halloween and this weekend. The college football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A. Bottom of your screen, what is happening at Keenan Stadium? North Carolina, top 10 in the nation, tied with Virginia. And we've seen Florida State being tested at home by Duke right now. And a close call by Texas against Houston earlier. Yeah, it's surviving advance for Texas. And it seems like that is the theme for North Carolina down there in the South sold this rivalry. Also in the Big 12 earlier today, UCF nearly pulled off an upset. A two-point play late to try to tie it up in Norman. Couldn't do it. Treshawn Ward tackled at the 30. And that was Jamoy Hodge. By the shoestrings. Scoreless so far in our third quarter. It'll be second and long here. You know, so much of the, the narrative of a conference is defined in the non-conference. And, and the narrative for the Big 12 has really been, hey, look, it's Oklahoma and Texas at the top. The depth isn't there as it was a year ago. A lot of that for Kansas State was shaped by that Missouri game. But this is a team that is getting a lot better. As we said before, they control their own destiny. Chase Brown went in motion. And the inside give bottled up at the 29. Okay, Trayshawn Ward stopped by Ubi Izor. And Namdi wearing number four. And has been active as we anticipated. We enjoyed talking with him late last night at the team hotel. He's brother, of course, plays for K-State. There's been some trash talking that's occurred this week. I called my brother every day this week to talk some trash. Asked him, do you usually call your brother every day? He said, nope, just this week. <laughs> Six of eight on third down. Here's Will Howard into the flats. Treshawn Ward pushed out near the line to gain, and this will be close. Needed to reach the 22, and the ball spotted right there, and it is a first down. When Kansas State has opted to go man-to-man, -man, or excuse me, when TCU has opted to go man-to-man, -man, they have had a tough time covering the backs out of the backfield. So you get the brother, who obviously doesn't play as much as Nandy, but. It sounded like the family sides more with Nandy right now because the PT's coming there. Yeah, right? they have to. And then that'll shift if this happens again at some point in the future yeah. and yeah, younger Nandy, brother's playing a little more. Nandy a junior, maybe once he's gone, it shifts a little bit more, but you are right. Your, your loyalties go to where the, uh, where the playing time goes. Christian Moore, DJ Giddens on the field. And Will Howard's going to keep it and race around the right side to the end zone and stop just short. Tripped up at the two. It'll be first down and goal for K-State and a 20-yard game by Howard. A great read by Will Howard as the defensive lineman collapses down. You get a lead blocker out front. That was Christian Moore. And Will Howard almost takes it to the house. Three carries, 61 yards. I'll tell you what, partner, this is not at all what I expected to see today. The, the efficiency, the dominance of Kansas State on offense has really been tremendous. Offset eye. 
Howard play action looking in zone wide open easiest pass he'll make this season Garrett Oakley corrals a touchdown there is a flag down in the nine Roddy that was wide open Christian Moore Here's the route. It's just the tight end going to that back pylon. Uh, that's what you call turning him scot-free. In the backfield, though, Christian Moore gets called for the penalty. I actually thought Christian Moore got run over more than anything. <laughs> we'll take the six points off the board. First and goal from the 12. And this possession eating away seconds off this third quarter clock. Now at over seven minutes and counting play number 12 with Brown in motion again Howard's going to keep it and sandwiched down after a gain of one it was Bud Clark and this is just a a backbreaking drive you see the hold 44 he brought him down. He definitely brought him down. He definitely got run over. <laughs> definitely brought him down. <laughs> well, for all the success TCU has enjoyed under Sonny Dykes, 17 and 5 in his second season. This was not on the agenda, obviously, last year in the run to the national championship game, but so far in year number two, open is Brown. A touchdown for number one. Roddy, they wanted to get. Jace Brown more involved. I would say tonight they've done that and then some. And they found a big play receiver in Jace Brown. He does a great job of setting up the corner. A little outside move back to the inside. And again, wide open for the touchdown against Avery Helm. Well, Brown, another weapon for either Avery Johnson or Will Howard. It was an 81-yard drive in 13 plays. More than half the quarter off the clock. And Chris Tennant continues to be perfect. 34-3 to in a K-State beatdown in progress. They've done it by land. This time they do it by air. Jace Brown in the end zone. And everybody's fired up here in Manhattan. Well, Big 12 fans, I would tell you to keep your eyes on Brown and Johnson in the years to come. A couple of talented freshmen that are starting to make their mark on Kansas State football tonight. 34 to 3. Big 12 championship game rematch. 322 days later, TCU gets it back. And there is work to do for head coach Sonny Dykes and company. A Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. Next Saturday's featured college football game, Baylor and Iowa State from Waco. Coverage starts 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today, ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. It is loud. It is festive. And on Harley Day, the fans have shown up more than 52,000 strong in that student section. Hasn't kept quiet all evening. Feels like they haven't been here in forever. Almost a month since the last home game. Quick strike. Taylor Wright. The tackle by Lee, a gain of 11 and a first down. It's the mentality if you're Josh Hoover, you're just Kendall Bryles. You're just trying to put the ball in the end zone. Like It's literally one drive at a time, and you see what happens. Dump off Bailey. Looted one tackler, four-yard gain. Jay Clifton the stop. The one thing that's almost undeniable is that the run will be a change-up at this point. You got to put the football in the air. But their natural tempo is this pace that they're going to have to go at to get back in this one. Seven in the box. Bailey with a large crease. Bailey running. He'll cut it back and be brought down from behind to the 29-yard line. And standing blocking up front, a gain of 32 for the Horn Frogs. And a good changeup it was that time with the run. Bailey approaching 100 yards on the ground. TCU has yet to reach the end zone tonight. And on first down, 
Bailey triple team. Desmond Purnell got there first. Gain of two. Big run by Bailey. It's a good block up front to spring him. On the slant pattern incomplete. Williams was breaking open. And that slant pattern, it feels like in the second half, has been disrupted. It, it, it has been. Well, they've run it on like on third and medium, and, and TCU is pressed up on them. That time, the timing was just off. They tried to fake the, the now screen. Savion Williams go on the slant, but the timing was way off. Third and loud. Pressure. And intercepted by K-State, Desmond Purnell. Read Josh Hoover's eyes. He was ready. He was waiting. And he picks off the TCU quarterback. How about the hands by the linebacker? And this is a guy, he's dropping to his right, plants, dives back to his left, and snags it. Great play by Desmond Purnell. But once again, the throw, the timing, just a little bit off. Another slant behind the receiver this time. JoJo Earl was the intended horned frog. But it comes up Kansas State. First turnover of the night. And they'll take a look at that last sequence. Desmond Purnell, the sophomore from Topeka, Kansas. And all smiles for the Cats this evening. And really on both sides of the ball. Roddy, I don't know that we've talked enough about the outstanding job that Joe Klanderman has done with the calls and how his team has executed. Keep in mind, without the services of Daniel Green, who tore his back against Missouri earlier in the season, Austin Romain only available for spot duty tonight. They've been thin at linebacker and safety, and you wouldn't know it by what we've seen on the field. Well, we've talked about the pressure they've been able to create on Josh Hoover. The question is, did, this, did the ground aid him in making the catch? Is that indisputable video evidence in your mind? So off that look, I'm not sure. It, the ball can touch the ground. It just can't aid you in making the catch. You have to have firm control throughout. I, I have not seen anything indisputable that he did not have firm control. I, I mean, it doesn't look like the ball moves. I, I think this stands. I, I don't think there's anything there to overturn it. Well, the fact that he was able to hold on to it after it appeared for a moment the ball may escape his grasp is the one indecisive split second where you can say, okay, was that firm control and throw that question out there? Well, I, I, I think you are pretty clear that the ball does hit the ground. From what I saw there, it does not look like the ball moves when it hits the ground. And it doesn't look like he is trying to gain control when the ball hits the ground. It looks like he has firm control. Ball does hit the ground. It's not jostled during the, the ball hitting around, so he survives the ground with the catch. I, I think it's a clean catch, but I think at best, it's a stands. Not sure I saw enough there to overturn it. After further review, the rule on the field stand. For state, for state. And I think that was it. Not enough to overturn the call, even if you feel like that the ground assisted and he did not have complete control. Nothing we saw in the replay verified that. Yeah, and you can you know, be great at lip reading that Sonny Dykes is not happy and, and that he says the ball hit the ground, and that is true. But the ball didn't aid him in securing the ground, and, and he survived the ground with the catch. So I, I, I think it's a good call. Avery Johnson has been on campus since January. And there were moments the coaching staff told us about in the recruiting process where they knew he has a different gear, a different level of speed, talent, and ability. And the second he stepped foot on campus, they saw it in practice and the team did as well. It was described as he has, there's an it factor. He is that dude, the technical term that Chris Kleiman used with us. And the fact that Will Howard has handled it as well as he has, still being productive, is a testament to him. DJ Giddens running ahead of the 40. Tackled by Perry in a gain of 13 more. And the K-State offense keeps coming at you in waves. 
Over 300 yards rushing now, over 515 yards of total offense, which should be the final play of a fast-moving third quarter. 15 minutes to go. Chris Kleiman, incredible run here in Manhattan. And we'll touch base with the K-State head man after this. Welcome back here to Manhattan with head coach of the Wildcats, Chris Kleiman, through three quarters. What has allowed your team to dominate? Well, the third quarter was huge for us. I told you we were up 28-10 on these guys last year and lost. Uh, they had a drive. We got a great fourth down stop. And then I think we had about a six or seven minute drive. Getting a touchdown was huge. Interception. We got to finish the game. We got to finish in the fourth. Thank you, Coach. Roy? T-Mac, thank you. And, Coach, I uh, don't mean to correct you, but it was actually almost an eight-minute drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was chewing time off the clock in the third quarter. But who's counting other than TCU watching the time bleed off the clock? I mean, it really has been the perfect night with the exception of the one field goal given up. The defense has almost pitched a shutout. The offense with two quarterbacks has been unstoppable. And for two teams that played really tight, close games a year ago, two. One of the Big 12 championship game. I don't think anybody expected to see this this evening. No. Avery Johnson, the quarterback. Phillip Brooks, the receiver. And Brooks loses one defender. Stopped near the 45 at the 46. And the quarterbacks are going to get a lot of credit for their performance today. But this offensive line on offense and the defensive line have been tremendous. You see the two scores a year ago. That was a come from behind win in the regular season. An absolute classic in the Big 12 championship game. And it felt like these teams were on similar trajectories coming into this one. I can tell you those trajectories are not similar in this one. Yeah, you look ahead to Kansas State scheduling some opportunities on the horizon with Houston a road trip to Austin and another big gainer DJ Giddens. Into TCU territory, ushered out inside the 40, a gain of 15 more, and Tymon Mitchell had a chance to make a play, couldn't do it. There were, there were two one frogs that had a chance. Ricky Dubrew was in the background, was in the in the backfield as well. Excuse me, Rick Dubrew was in the backfield as well. It's been it's been one of those like demoralizing games for TCU's defense where they can't do anything right. On optimism and for the win against BYU. And Josh Hoover threw for 439 yards in his first career start. K State has said so far, not tonight. Avery Johnson retreating and was nearly sacked. The wrong end of the field. Let's see if they rolled him down or if he got it loose. Yeah, that's a Second down. Namdi OB Izor. Makes a big time play on the freshman signal caller. That's a loss of 13. Even if he wasn't down prior to the pass, he didn't get that ball past the line of scrimmage, so it would have been grounding anyway. You now the knee clearly down in this sequence before the ball is fully released. It's actually a, a good play in this game for Avery Johnson because now you, you get to coach him. Hey, look. You could create that space in high school and then get outside. You can't do that in college. Let's throw that ball away a little early. And in high school, we played multiple sports, won titles in all those campaigns. A winner on and off the field. Play of game, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. A couple of missteps here. Yeah, and look, the freshman has been fantastic tonight. The last two plays are the answer to the question, well, why don't you just go with Avery Johnson full time? Because operationally, with a freshman, you're just never quite sure. You take a sack, you, you got to have some urgency getting up to the line, getting the offense going. Both of those learning experiences for the young player. But the hair, Roddy, the hair. It's tremendous. Best lettuce in the game. To the edge, a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and long. And I think the way the staff has handled the situation going back last year with Adrian Martinez, and it was different. Martinez would struggle to practice during the week, was injured, and then on game day they would try to figure out whether or not he was going to be able to go. And Will Howard would come in. He played well when he did, obviously, in the Big 12 championship and helping lead K-State to that title level. And so he can't be dismissed, and we've seen tonight, nor should he be, with the skill set that he has 
and the experience that he has. And that will be needed in Austin, and that will be needed later this year at Kansas and the remaining part of the Big 12 schedule. And a lot of offenses can't operate with two quarterbacks because of the differences between the two. And, and are there different skill sets between Avery Johnson and Will Howard? Yes. But the offense, the, the plays that they run don't really change. The frequency that they may do quarterback run or the frequency that they put it on the quarterback's plate to throw it downfield, that may change slightly. But it feels like the offense in terms of the the plays that they run isn't that much different because quarterback run will show up with will howard and we've seen Avery johnson throw the ball down the field right i'll introduce you to jack bloomer here first punt of the night for k state and a wobbler drift out of bounds near the 10. jp richardson fielded that one cleanly after a 35-yard punt it is all wildcats 10:45 to go in manhattan Kevin and Sam, your Capital One rewarding performance. Major upset brewing in Chapel Hill. This is Tony Musket to Malik Washington. Great play design. Musket to Washington. He evades the defense, and then Washington avoids a tackle or two and does the rest. North Carolina just turned it over on downs. Three minutes to go. Virginia up four. Roy. KC, Virginia hasn't won a conference game, it feels like, in about a decade. That would be an enormous upset. And a huge win for head coach Tony Elliott coming back from last year's tragedy. That would be devastating for Carolina, a team that's undefeated and has goals and aspirations of an ACC title. Roddy, maybe more. Yeah, and, and a Carolina team that still has Duke and, uh, and Clemson down the line. Um, that'd be wild. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Virginia, probably the best one-win team in the country. Hoover bottled up and sacked. Javon Banks, they'll lose four. And K-State feasting on this TCU offense all night. Joe Klanderman's crew has been relentless, getting in the backfield, pressuring Josh Hoover. The coverage has been phenomenal. You can't say enough about this defense's performance. Two sacks tonight, 16 on the season. TCU, one of nine on third down this evening. Hoover wants to air one out. He does, and nobody home. Dalen Wright was in the area in plus territory. And a three and out force by the K-State defense. And you mentioned Joe Klanderman. We had a great conversation with him yesterday. You could feel his positive energy the second he walked in the room. And I don't even know if he could have predicted a performance like this, however. I, I don't know that he could have either. But he will certainly be thrilled with the performance of his defense it's almost been limited action they've only played 40 plays now 49 plays in this game Brooks calls for the fair catch at the 49 a punt of just 38 yards in K-State in business once again the Wildcats thinking about the second half of this schedule climbing the ladder in the Big 12 standings more on that coming up Now the two in the backfield at quarterback for Kansas State. Will Howard got the night started off on the right foot. An opening drive touchdown, 30-yard rush. And then Avery Johnson has been just as good, if not better at times. Well, they've gone every other series for the two, and they've both done it with their feet. They've both done it through the air. I've been impressed with Avery Johnson's ability to throw the football. This actually his first career touchdown pass as that pitch was forward. But Will Howard has delivered the ball to the open man consistently. These quarterbacks have been phenomenal. I've said it before, say it again. I give a lot of credit to the guys around them for performing no matter who's in the game. But I mean, you, you, which one played better? You can't tell. They both played great today. It's a nice problem to have for Colin Klein and this Kansas State offensive coaching staff. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor joins us once again from the sidelines, T Mac. I thought it was cool how Avery Johnson made it very clear how important Will Howard has been for him and how he came in here to Kansas State. And Will is the reason that he learned to read defensive coverages. He said, playing high school football in Kansas, you don't see what you see in the Big 12. And Will has really helped Avery come along. And so, yes, they're battling in a sense, but Will's been so important to the development of Avery. And I think that can't be overstated. 
dedicated enough. Yeah, Taylor, I'll go deeper than that. And it was Skylar Thompson that helped Will Howard when he first got started and was getting more reps way back in, what was it, 2020. And so it's just been kind of this line of signal callers that have all supported each other. And, and Roddy, it's just not easy to do that in 2023. You don't hear about this that often around the country. That, that's culture. That is a, a program with a culture of team comes first. And, and people that take pride in it, if you have pride in a program, you want the program to be great while you're there, but also after your career is over. And so the torch is passed from quarterback to quarterback on down the line. Third down and three. Ward in at running back. Howard is the quarterback. He'll retrieve the low snap. All night to throw. Dumps it off to the tight end. And Will Swanson. And a race down to the 25 and a gate of 17. Second catch of the season for number 83. Will Swanson and Garrett Oakley have done it, and Christian Moore as well, have done a nice job without Ben Sinnott coming back in the game. At the end of this week, I said, hey, look, Ben Sinnott might be my favorite player that we'll see all season because of all the versatility that he has. Can I call it's, him a fullback, by the way? Uh, That's what I want to do. I'll allow it. Okay. He's kind of a hybrid fullback age but because we don't see many fullbacks yes he's a fullback that's why i want to call him a fullback okay. i think we should celebrate it's like fullbacks. the kyle use check style fullback that works ward with a lead blocker and this time unable to find some open space there as dominic williams tracked him down for a loss of a couple no time winding down and with those Big 12 standings here before we get out of Manhattan, it's an important game. It was an important game for both sides, but for Kansas State, when you look at the schedule and you see the loss at Missouri, but only one conference loss coming in Stillwater, Roddy, which is where it will be next week, it presents opportunities when you look at a road trip to Texas and maybe a manageable slate around that game. And if you have your eyes set on trying to repeat Listen, we understand Brent Venables and Oklahoma are doing their thing. They stay undefeated today, holding on for dear life against UCF. And Texas is that sexy pick once again. But Kansas State is, is always there and always lurking and always ready. Take a look at those Big 12 standings coming up. 34-3, Cats. AT&T 5G is keeping fans connected with our multi-view over on ABC. Duke has just 43 passing yards, but they lead Florida State 20 to 17. Jackson Dart, a pair of touchdown runs and a touchdown throw. Ole Miss up on Auburn over on ESPN and LSU taking it to Army on the SEC Network. Roy. Kevin, thank you. Back here in Manhattan, Kansas, it is all K-State. All Will Howard and all Avery Johnson. Not the former San Antonio Spurs guard and head coach, but the K-State quarterback, the freshman phenom. Jamal Johnson with the stop here. It'll be third down for the Wildcats. Only punted once tonight. And if you tuned in late, both quarterbacks were actually on the field to start this game. With Johnson lining up as a wide receiver, Howard in a quarterback, and then it was Will Howard that stayed on the field for the duration that opening possession touchdown. So you're telling me Avery Johnson's got more career starts at receiver than quarterback? At this juncture, that is what I'm telling you. I have a feeling his career won't end with that being the case. Probably not. But if you're Chris Kleiman, in all seriousness, with Houston coming to town next, Treshawn Wardle pick up a first down. It'll be first and goal. Do you kind of operate under this same quarterback umbrella where essentially both players are alternating series? I don't think it'll be quite that extreme going forward. I, I don't know how you do that in a close football game. You, you, you sort of build up those reps, familiarity with the defenses, but I do think it gives you a good option if you need a spark, if you need a different changeup, if you need to give a defense a different look to be able to put in the other guy, still operate at a high level, but make the defense think about other stuff. On first and goal, Treshawn Ward will probe his way in front of the five, and that's it. The Isor with the tackle. And under five minutes to go. Well, I don't know coming in if you would have told us that TCU would 
five minutes of play would be without a touchdown in this game. You just don't see that from a Kendall Browse, a Sonny Dykes, a TCU offense. Really ever. Yeah, they'll be searching for answers after this one. They really got dominated up front, though. Howard will throw it back wide open. And they did Swanson catch it cleanly. A conversation is being had, and this was close. And they're going to rule that a catch, but short of the end zone, Roddy. He was standing inside the goal line, but then reached back out. He does a nice job of catching the football. His knee is in the end zone, but the ball doesn't look like it ever crosses the plane, although he kind of brings it into his stomach. Where is that stomach? And when do the knees go down? Ball has to cross the plane, and that looks a, like a touchdown. That's a touchdown. That's a that touchdown. That looks like a touchdown. When he catches the football, when the, ball's hit, hit, when the ball hits his hands, I mean, it is just barely across the plane. I right, touchdown. Now, Will Swanson hasn't been utilized that often prior to tonight. We talked about the injury to Ben Sennett. Talking about his first touchdown. Number 83 of the season. And it would be the first touchdown of his career in Manhattan. That's indisputable video evidence where I come from. Assuming that's a catch, I think he crossed the goal line with possession on that initial two or three looks. I think you're right, Roy. Let's see where he See that angle looks like he's it's out of the end zone when he when his hands first contact it. You, the ruling has been changed to a touchdown. But it was the angle. You're right. Will Swanson have a night. Kansas State have a night. And this has been as dominant a win. As you'll see, all phases of the game, absolutely tremendous. Less than four to go. Tenet remains perfect. Wildcats remain perfect. Everybody getting a touchdown this evening. And the last one with Will Swanson holding on for dear life. Congratulations. Next stop on the F1 schedule is the U.S. Grand Prix at Coda Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Tomorrow afternoon, 3 Eastern, our pre-race coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern on the A on ABC and the ESPN app. And Roy Verstappen starts sixth. You've got Leclerc on pole, Norris P2, and Lewis Hamilton starting third. The Mercedes showed a lot of pace this weekend. I'm excited. I was excited earlier today for Harley Day. Uh, by the way, where was Taylor McGregor pregame? Today is the 25th annual Harley Day here at Kansas State University. It started in the late 90s when former athletic director Lon Floyd wanted to spice up game day. One day he was talking to one of his friends about potential ideas when a Harley Davidson drove by. The two came up with the idea, well, let's bring Harleys onto the field pregame. And here we are 25 years later. Traditions like this are what make college football so special. Indeed, and well done well, on the back of that Harley. It, it felt like maybe T-Mac had been on a motorcycle at some point in her past. Call me crazy, and maybe I'm wrong, but it looked very natural. Yes, it although did. they they stuck you with the tricycle motorcycle, T-Mac. That thing had three wheels, not the usual two. Was it? care it was still an absolute <laughs> blast i mean how many reporters can say they were on a harley davidson riding around the field pregame not a lot Riley did a bowl game one time on a lawnmower That's i've true. been told That's so i mean things have happened along those lines what was a moving question is what was your guy's name the guy uh, giving you the tour of uh, bill snyder bill snyder family stadium it was so loud you couldn't even hear anybody talk on third down, Sanders searching for the line to gain. But don't, and he did get there. Uh, don't worry, I did get a selfie oh, with him. So. Of course you did. <laughs> I know.
know what his face looks like. I just don't know his name. Question is, Roy, did you not get the memo that it was Harley Day and that's why you left your Harley at home? I did leave my Harley back in South Carolina. Yeah, apologies. Unfortunate. It was great to see, and it does amp up the crowd. Like the second the Jumbotron shows all of the bikes coming out, the whole place went berserk. And the pass incomplete. Hoover remains on the field looking for Chase Curtis. But it is something that you don't see anywhere else, and it's been going on for more than 25 years. It is, it is one of the joys of this business, getting to go different places and learn about their customs and traditions, because I was today years old when I found out that Harley Day was a thing. Second down. Let's see what the stoppage is all about. That clock didn't stop. Now they'll have to convene to try to rectify that. All right, I don't know that there's a coach in America that's more accommodating than Sonny Dykes and talking with their staff yesterday just has not been there night and you start to look at the season. Start the clock on my line signal. And there's been some some peaks and, and some valleys last week. Against BYU, you kind of feel like things are, are starting to feel and look better. And this game kind of reminds you a little bit more of what happened in Fort Worth against West Virginia, although on a far deeper scale. And even at Iowa State with the picks, the turnovers that went down. There's talent here. I don't think anybody will debate that. There's some outstanding skill position players, and Hoover's a developing quarterback. The, the question is, can you figure it out up front? Because that's really what, what hindered them today. And I would say up front on both sides of the ball. First down carry. Garner's about five. Don't forget next week our Saturday night football game as Coach Prime in Colorado at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, squaring off against number 25 UCLA. It's 7.30 Eastern, ABC, and also the ESPN app. Rose Bowl will be rocking with Coach Prime in town. And Shador Sanders at quarterback. Nearly picked off. Pass was tipped. Bo Palmer in the area. I think that was number 28, Rex Van Wy. Who we thought would get some snaps tonight. What a great name, Rex Van Wy. Sounds like a linebacker. This, uh, back to your point about TCU, though, this is the best team that they've played so far, Kansas State, who's really kind of hitting their stride. And, and, and they and TCU played poorly today. And so I don't think this is indicative of who this team is, but, but they will be soul searching. Hoover fires a strike to Richardson. And on third and five, he'll gain four. Rex Van Wynde tackle again. Fourth and one. The Lord Frogs would love to at least get a touchdown before escaping Manhattan. And this time the slant is there. And on fourth and one, a gain of seven. And Robinson will keep the drive alive. Great catch by Jalen Robinson. And the thought process is with these slants, a high percentage pass, and if you can get inside, no matter if there's press coverage or not, you've got a shot. The issue is... Kansas State's DBs have played it well today. Hoover, 19 of 36 passing. That'll be his 20th completion. DJ Allen. And a gain of six more. And it was Thompson that grabbed it. Yeah, the Arkansas transfer. For TCU, this game is out of hand, but feel great if you can get a touchdown. But they sub, so Kansas State is taking their sweet time getting on and off the field. First catch for Thompson. Trying to get more involved in the offense moving forward. Off the pump fake. It'll be Thompson again. And enough for first down. And under 30 seconds to go. Horn Frogs do have a couple of timeouts. They want to use them, and we'll talk things over here. 
Oh, the young quarterback. TCU has called their second time out of the half. 30 seconds time out. Kendall Bryles, Sonny Dykes will do everything they can to try to have some more teachable moments. And it doesn't sound like Chandler Morris is going to be back in the fold anytime in the near future. Maybe a couple of more games, a couple of more weeks towards the end of November, perhaps, Ronnie? Yeah, they're, they're hoping to have him back before the end of the regular season. So this is Josh Hoover's team for the foreseeable future. And look, I, I think he's got a lot of ability. I, I really do. And I think this offense fits him. There was some miscommunication with receivers today. He was under a ton of pressure. And so that's, I think, where the issues start. What, we don't, what were the issues in protection that caused Josh Hoover to not have as much time to throw the ball? What were the issues on the back end that made the reads a little more muddy? Now TCU came in averaging almost 80 plays per game. It's Kansas State that was close to that number tonight. Horn Frogs just their 61st play. And Hoover into traffic in the pass corral. That is a first down. It'll be first and goal from the nine. And Chase Curtis with another grab. And the clock winding down. Hoover. And incomplete. Jalen Robinson is behind him. Jordan Wright in coverage. A late flag came out. It was really late. I think this has been a cleanly officiated game from what we've seen tonight. Beautifully officiated. Also in the replay booth. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, zero of the defense. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct for number zero. That would explain the tardiness. Jordan Wright. Oh. TCU with maybe another snap or three. And on the last play, I mean, you get the taunting penalty. Come to the bench and see me, young fellow. We're going to have to have a chat about penalties. Maybe the only stain on the resume tonight for K-State. <laughs> the defense wants this three-point game. Hoover will keep it, dump it out into the flats, and upended was Chase Curtis. And he remains down. Well, that's what you don't want to see at the end of a game. Justice James with the tackle. Curtis gained two yards, and Roddy is bracing that right knee. Yeah, you, you, you hate to see that any time, especially in a game like this. Horn Frogs will fly back to Fort Worth tonight. And go back to the drawing board. Get some time to rest up, recuperate, and then a road trip to Lubbock in early November. Seven seconds to go. The clock was stopped. Allow Curtis to get off the field. Chris Klein is just ready to Put the card in the time clock and get out of here and get ready. The back half of this Big 12 schedule and try to get back in the thick of this Big 12 race. They are squarely in it. And if they keep playing like this, they've got Texas Tech next week on the road and the big showdown against Texas. And out of the back of the end zone. Excuse me, I was looking at the wrong schedule. That's what TCU has coming up. You got Houston and then a road trip to Texas for the Wildcats the next couple of weeks. One second remaining, and one more snap, it appears, for TCU. If you don't think this snap means something to that defense, and you're watching, you don't know defenses. Because keeping a team without a touchdown is one of those things that you walk in on Sunday or Monday, whenever you do your film, you're just a little more puffed out seeing that three. Backfield is empty. Clean snap for Hoover to the end zone and batted down. 41 to 3 is the final.
And an absolute beatdown issued by Chris Kleiman's team tonight at home in Manhattan. And the defense swarms Rex Van Wyth, the guy who knocked down that ball at the end of the game. I mean, you think that was a game-winning play. That's how much it meant to cap off a dominant performance by the Kansas State Wildcats with a goal line stand that meant nothing. But it meant uh, everything to that defense. Credit to Chris Kleiman's team. The performance offensively, defensively, up front, it was just tremendous. Taylor McGregor with Coach Kleiman. Coach, what impressed you the most about your dominant performance here tonight? All three phases, offense, defense, special teams. We got a bunch of guys that care for each other in the locker room. They don't care who gets the credit. We were going to play a couple of running backs. We were going to play a couple of quarterbacks. We played a lot of guys on defense. And when you love each other, nobody really cares who gets the credit, and that's a credit to those guys in the locker room. How do you evaluate the way it worked with both quarterbacks getting reps tonight? Well, oh, 41 to 3 is how I evaluate that. Both guys made plays for us. Excited for both of them. What stood out to you about the way your defense played tonight to hold a potent TCU offense to three points? They were inspired. They really were. We haven't played our best defense. Today we probably did. Credit to Coach Klanderman, the defensive staff, and those kids in the locker room. Big win for us. Great crowd. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Roy? Yeah, Coach, this wasn't the win against Southeast Missouri State. This was TCU, a team that played for a national championship a season ago. 41 to 3 our final score for Roddy Jones and Taylor McGregor and our entire crew. I'm Roy Philpott saying good night from Manhattan. Let's get you back to the studio. Kevin Connors, Sam Acho. Gentlemen, 